One of the nice things about taking a job, like I've taken a double verify recently, is that I'm coming into uh, an organization, a business that really has extraordinary momentum. I mean, the company has done really well over the last uh, uh, few years. And, and even, uh, you know, despite what's going on in the, in the macroeconomic environment uh, around COVID, the company continues to, to grow at double digit rates. Um, is still uh, exceptionally you know, profitable. So stepping into an organization like this, which has been so successful, has been pretty easy. So my main task is, is, is to do no harm at this point, is continue that momentum growing. Um, and I think you know, when we talk about momentum, what the real focus is, is kind of driving growth on, on three different vectors, uh, continuing our international expansion, which is, is still um, in kind of its early stages, uh, uh, doubling down in areas in, in which we've had success uh, with regard to um, product development. So authentic brand safety, uh, new contextual products, et cetera. And then uh, most relevant to what you just asked Andy, which is really looking at uh, new sectors. Um, so social and specifically connected television, where we think there's a huge opportunity uh, to provide verification, brand safety, viewability, um, you know, all those same criteria that have become so important in mobile and in desktop uh, are now increasingly important in the CTV world. What's really interesting around connected television is the fact that unlike traditional linear television, there is no single metric by which all buyers um, can evaluate the efficacy and reach uh, of, their, of their buys, right? You have a Nielsen uh, statistic in linear television, which, is, uh, which has become you know, the de facto uh, gold standard of measurement, but there's no such thing in CTV. So I think one of the, the great opportunities for companies like Double Verify is when we look at that $70 billion in linear TV ad spend, how do we move that to connected television? And you know, at Talaria, my previous role, we looked at it from the programmatic perspective, which is how do we reduce friction and buying? Um, but really at DV, the bigger question is, how do we build confidence? Confidence that um, because there's no single metric out there, that the, linear, uh, that the dollars moving from linear that go into CTV are being well spent, are, um, are avoiding fraud, are being delivered in a brand safe way, um, are viewable, which is, which is a really interesting thing that there are, there are still viewability issues when it comes to connected television, something that you really don't have in linear TV. Through our uh, authentic impression, which is kind of our standard uh, metric of looking at performance that goes beyond fraud. So really looking at four different criteria. Um, fraud, which we mentioned, um, whether an ad was delivered in a connected te television environment in a fraud-free manner, um, whether it was done in a brand safe capability. So we've got 75 different categories of, of content that we want to make sure that the buyer um, ad is, is aligned with. Um, whether or not that was uh, in geo, so delivered to the right person in the right place, and finally viewable. Um, and you started the question off, Andy, with talking about viewability. Uh, there's this grand assumption that, well, since it was delivered to a television set in someone's living room, it must be viewable, right? Well, um, you know, the, the reality of it is, in, in many cases, it's not either because the fact that um, there are now new digital formats, which may not take up the full screen. So is it big enough on the screen for someone to actually view it if it's not a full screen um, CTV ad? As well as the fact that um, if the full ad isn't viewed, um, is it truly viewable? I.e., did it run for a certain number of seconds? Did it hit the, you know, the first quartile? And we found a large percentage of ads um, don't get delivered um, through that first quartile of viewing. Uh, so it's not truly viewable. As a matter of fact, um, you know, that we see only about 88% of ads that are delivered to CTV meet our viewability criteria. So um, viewability is not guaranteed. And, you know, surprisingly enough, fraud is still in becoming an emerging issue when it comes to connected television as well. When we look at fraud, there's a couple different avenues through which it's entering into the CTV world. And it's based on the way that connected television is ads are delivered, right? So, um, 
through the intermediaries that are managing kind of server-side ad inclusion or SSAI, um, there's an opportunity for kind of um, uh, rogue players to insert themselves because there needs to be other parties that are part of that serving process. Very different than linear television where you deliver an ad to a, a content provider and they make sure that the ad gets delivered through the system that they use. Here there's third parties touching it, which always allows for um, someone to insert themselves into that third party equation um, and do so in a way that's not aligned um, with the, uh, you know, with the buyer's wishes. Um, there's also the growth of programmatic in connected television. And when programmatic, which obviously I'm a huge fan of, I've, I've spent the last you know, 15 years of my you know, ad tech career you know, promoting programmatic, it's great for reducing friction, but it also creates a lack of transparency on what's being delivered from the content producer to the buyer. Um, those, you know, because of those two areas, the mechanics of how ads are delivered or allow people to insert themselves in, as well as the, you know, the growth of programmatic as a buying channel, which creates a lack of transparency. There's just more opportunities for um, not only things like, you know, unsuitable brand and unsuitable content being inserted into the CTV equation, but, but fraud. I mean, we've seen in the last year alone, we discovered 1,300 fraudulent apps, fraudulent CTV apps um, that were not valid, that buyers had been buying because they'd been positioned as legitimate connected television apps that had legitimate content. Now, a lot of that was through programmatic. So, you know, because there's a little bit lack of transparency, direct buyers don't have as much of an issue. Um, but still, we've seen, you know, significant growth there. And, you know, it's just a, the nature of the digital world where the money is going and we're seeing money continuing to flow into CTV, you know, the fraud will follow. So you know, that is a key driver of ours, which is to make buyers feel confident that their spend on CTV is being spent wisely and safely. Obviously, the pandemic has been challenging for businesses, you know, in the digital media space and for, for all businesses. Um, both from a personnel perspective, from a, a marketing perspective, from many different angles. I think what's been interesting for where we sit in the ecosystem is that um, you, you make a great point. It, you know, massive events like this tend to create seismic changes in businesses. And I think we saw this in 2008 um, with the last major recession, which is really when the dawn of programmatic came around. It was an inflection point for media buying in the digital world. Um, because advertisers only had so much money to spend and they were looking for ways to be more efficient in their spend and programmatic emerged in the, you know, from the depths of the recession to becoming the powerhouse way that digital media is bought and sold. I think we're seeing a similar um, position here when it comes to verification and, and brand safety and measurement um, in the digital world as well. Because advertisers now know that they have a dollar to spend. This is it. I don't have $5 anymore. I have a dollar to spend. So I better make sure that that spend is as efficient as possible. It needs to hit the right person. It needs to be in the right environment. And I certainly don't want to spend it on fraud. So I think that, you know, verification, measurement, analytics, the things that Double Verifies have been involved in have never been more important because advertisers are now, you know, economically squeezed. And aligned with that, you have a content environment, which Companies are now, brands are now forced to not only make binary decisions between, hey, this is bad or this is good, this is not appropriate content. Um, and they're now making uh, you know, decisions across the spectrum. Does this align with my brand? Is this the political stand I'm gonna take? Brands are no longer able to avoid politics. Um, so the ability to manage their delivery across different the political spectrum to align with their brand has become increasingly important. So it's been a watershed moment. You know, our business has benefited from this moment, and I think it's going to continue to do so as, you know, we see this move from uh, not just a point in time change, but, a, you know, an ongoing perspective of the, the advertising industry.